Hello, hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Fluently Forward. I am exuberant to have on Michael Buckley on the show. Welcome to the show. How you doing? I'm exuberant to be here. Thank <laughs> you for the rousing introduction. <laughs> I was so excited. You are, you formerly go as What the Buck on YouTube. Yes. You are a retired YouTuber. I am. And I was so excited when I found out that you live in Denver because my friends and I watched your, I mean, you must get this all the time. We watched your videos all the time growing up. Your Two Girls, One Cup reaction inspired me and my friends to watch Two Girls, One Cup. You're welcome I mean, to you your parents. Who, you, I basically inspired you to watch porn, and now I'm canceled. Mm. Good thing I'm not relevant anymore. Yes, <laughs> but you know what? Also, I remember me and my friend, we were like traumatized. We made a meal before we watched Two Girls, One Cup. I don't know why. We both made pasta, and mine was creamy Alfredo, and hers was <laughs> chunky cheddar. It was like the worst uh, <laughs> sauces you could pick for watching that film. Thank you for sharing that with me, and I will, I will cling to that that memory. I'll go home and journal about it. Yeah. And it's funny as someone who was wanting to be a content creator who was launching the What the Buck show and had been already on for like a year and I was, you know, dabbling between 10,000 and 100,000 views per video and doing decent for the time. So imagine my delight when I do a reaction to Two <laughs> Girls, One Cup and I get a million views and I'm like, oh no, <laughs> like this is all people want to see. And I just, I watch it back occasionally and I look like an alien. <laughs> like, I'm like, what? But I was. It was a visceral, real reaction. Like, it was before the Fine Brothers launched a React series. Like, it was interesting that in 2007, I had the wherewithal to think, I'm going to react to something, you know? You were ahead of the curve. I think so. And the video was, I still remember, I hate to quote you too. There's you. poop! I don't know what For I For me, it was when you said, it looks like peanut butter, and then yeah. you went, and I love peanut butter. Yes, I know. <laughs> it was just so earnest, you Thank know? Thank you. I know. But you also, I mean, one of the things that you talked all about on YouTube was pop culture. Mm -hmm. I have so many questions for you. Number one is what would you say is the main difference in how we talk about pop culture in 2023 versus back in the day on YouTube? Oh my God. So I am definitely a product of the, the, the generation that grew up kind of dragging celebrities and, you know, Joan Rivers and Howard Stern and just Perez making fun of Perez Hilton and making fun of celebrities. And it was fine. Like we all did it and it was hilarious and funny and expected. And so I think that was kind of like my midlife crisis on YouTube was when I got till the end of my career, I sensed it all changed and I had changed probably two or three years before I stopped, but I still, like I knew that I couldn't say half the things I said. Like I remember there was an SNL skit where they were making fun of Project Runway and they were saying, you know, white, black, gay, just labeling everybody. Yeah. And I know now I'm like, oh God, I couldn't do that. You know, yeah. and I made under the guise of it's okay because I'm gay and I'm making fun of myself too. And so you know, I gave myself permission to, and I never had any consequences because again, it was 2007, 2008, nobody said anything. They loved it. Um, you know, I think about a video I did with Ryan Higa, who was very popular called Gays Versus Asians, and it's basically just a giant gay joke, an Asian joke. And again, now the kids would be like, this is awful. This is problematic. You're, you know, yeah. and it is also lazy. Let's be honest. It's kind of lazy comedy. And so I love going for the easy joke back in the day. Um, and so now, right, if I suddenly was hired by, by someone to cover pop culture, I think I would be bored. I think I would be unenthusiastic. And I think, I mean, my starting point point was I wanted to not be like entertainment tonight. I think it's all silly. I think, what are you wearing? Like, yes. what was it like preparing for this? It's all so dumb. And so like when I got hired to do actual red carpet stuff, you could see the look on my face of like, am I going to be a normal person or am I going to be myself? And I always did like a mix of I'm hired to do this. I'll, what are you wearing? Tell us about the role. Like, I tried to make it at least like I was doing a comedy version of a red carpet reporter because, like, that's what What the Buck was. It was a comedy version of an entertainment reporter. Like, I had no desire to be an entertainment reporter. But that was a very long answer to your simple question, which it would be very different today. Well, it's fascinating because you kind of retroactive, like, you chose to kind of self-retire yourself like uh, Jenna Marbles and other people have. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I'm with you. Like, I'm creepy. I'm yeah. gossipy. I love the speculation. If I got the chance to interview a celebrity, I would be like, who is doing cocaine in the bathroom? Like, yeah. have you had a threesome? Like, what's yeah. going on? Like, did Harvey Weinstein ever text message you? Like, right. I'm just nosy and creepy. Right. And the thing is, all of us are. But nowadays, like, you can't say that you are. You have to pretend yeah. that you're not. 
Yeah. Well, I hope you still are nosy and creepy. And if you get the opportunity, (laughs) please ask those questions on behalf of all of us. And I'm not like mad about it. I'm not one of those people who's, I am almost 50 years old. I'm not someone who's like, well, back in my day, people had senses of humor. I understand. The climate has changed. I love that, you know, people are you know, feeling more comfortable pushing back on things and making us aware. I want to be a better person. I want to add value to the world. Do I think my comedy was harmful to the world? I don't know. I guess I could ask somebody. But, you know, I look back and I was, you know, pretty well intended. And honestly, now that I've retired for so many years, I think like, In 2016, I was just done. And that's the truth, too. Like, let's be honest. I had created this online persona that I did not wish to maintain. And I really, as I got older, I got so less interested in all of the topics. So I would be covering reality shows or I would cover Miley or cover Bieber or whatever would get me views. Because, again, that's how I was monetizing myself. But it's still, like, you can only make the same joke so many times. And I just, and also the keeping up with it is exhausting. Like, I wasn't an evergreen show. Like if I had been able to produce evergreen content, I think I would have enjoyed it more and had longevity. But because I cast myself in the role of this just in, yeah. it did require me to pay more attention to the current events than I ever would want to as like a 40 year old. Like I really, I don't want to be constantly scrolling or looking at titter, titter, Twitter <laughs> or, or trying to, you know, uh, you know, come up with clever things to say. Like I just, I, I'm yeah. good. I'm good. But that's the thing about like work and a job even if yep. your job was looking at Titter, right? And right. watching porn all day. Yep. After Love while, that. Hire me for that. Yeah, you'd be like, I'm tired of these titties. You yeah. know, like sometimes yep. people will be like, oh my God, Shannon, like breaking news, like this just happened with Rihanna. And I'm like, I can't, like it's work, you know? Yeah. Um, but I am so excited for us to dive into our episode because you said that you haven't really been in the pop culture scene since you retired. So some of these, we're going to talk about old and new celebrity rumors. You'll probably know the old ones. Yeah. The new ones might be completely new to you. I'm open and excited for anything. Yes. Okay. Well, before we get into it, I have a couple questions for you. Number one, what is the first celebrity rumor that comes to your mind? Like when I say celebrity rumor, what couple or scandal do you think of? Jennifer Aniston pregnant. Because like it was on the cover of OK Magazine like 75 times. So I just remember being in the grocery store and thinking, poor Jennifer Aniston, who's never been pregnant. So I do think in terms of rumor, like that's a rumor. Like that was never, she was never knowingly pregnant. She has no children to speak of at over 50 years old. So when you say rumor, I think Jennifer Aniston is pregnant. And I think of like her and Brad and Angie. And it's crazy that Jennifer Aniston, who's like not a very scandalous, scandalous woman at all she just has her nips out and her yeah. highlighted hair as she should as she should like she is i mean honestly oh my god god what a yeah. 90s icon but yeah. she is just she was always on the gossip rags i remember every time going to stop and shop checkout she was heartbroken she was lonely she was pregnant she was sad she was with justin thoreau then she was heartbroken from him I don't understand why they picked her as like the go-to icon when like, I don't know, there's more scandal, Britney. Yeah. Like Britney wasn't even on the magazines as much as Jenna Aniston was. And for those of you tuning in from a different geography location, the Stop and Shop is our big national (laughs) grocery store. You might have a Shaw's, you might have a Kroger's, you might have a Publix, but we on the East Coast sure did love our Stop and Shop and we really love what it became a super Stop and Shop. Oh, that was the big one. I love that you just said Stop and Shop. Yeah, let's talk about Stop and Shop. Wegmans was the real class up though. No, but I think of Jennifer Aniston and, and yeah, and it's interesting what we're talking about previously. She recently said in an interview, she doesn't love cancel culture. And she said, I don't think every celebrity scandal needs to be Harvey Weinstein, meaning we've got to give some grace for growth. And I, yeah. I think that's the message I'd like to put out. We have to give some grace. Someone to say, I effed up. I did wrong. Again, I didn't sexually assault or murder anybody. I said the wrong thing in a tweet in 2015. Yeah. Let's, you know, give some grace for that. Yeah, Let's not employ them for the rest of their life, you know. Right, going back to the past. Although, yeah. You know, now that we're talking about it, Jennifer Aniston also did say, I think, that it was some sort of, like, weird quote about how celebrities are famous, but, like, influencers are trying to, like, take our spotlight. And everybody was mad at that because it's like, yeah, you mean people who, like, don't have famous parents also get a chance to try. Calm down, Jennifer Aniston. No, and I honestly, I was early enough to be, everybody was annoyed with me. Like I remember (laughs) reporters from Inside Edition coming to my house to interview me and they hated talking to me because they're like, what do you do? Do you have a degree in journalism? And I made more money a year than they did and they hated me. The girl from CBS who came to my house, Katie Couric, did a story about me 
so irritated with me. You What's your background in? Bro- yeah. Calm down, Lee. You know, calm down. Just trying to have fun out here, bitch. Sorry, I monetized it. <laughs> but it's also crazy because I think that a lot of these like industry titans are really threatened because there's a TikToker who can dance and get more views than their late night show with Jimmy Kimmel, which right. is like a right. fact that is happening today. Right, yeah. and that's why all the talk shows realize that nobody watches on TV and they need to put the clips on YouTube or yes. put them, splice them and put them on Instagram or TikTok. That's where people are watching. No one is sitting and watching SNL even learn. Like, mm-hmm. SNL used to copyright strike everything, and now they're like, nope, we'll just put the clips on YouTube. More people are going to watch the clips on YouTube than are going to sit and watch at 1130 you know at was, night. Uh, so good at that, Key and Peel. So good at that. Like, they yeah, were all they got over it. YouTube. And I remember, too, at the end of their YouTubes, they would be like, by the way, please watch the show. Because, like, yeah. Nobody's watching the show, but everyone's watching it on YouTube. Today's episode is brought to you by Hair Love. Hair Love is a company that is going to help you, anyone who is experiencing hair breakage, thinning, loss of volume. Hair Love is designed to get you to love your hair again and bring it back to that incredible volume that you want. So their main product here is the Growth Complex. That's a daily vitamin, and it has this exact amount of vitamins and minerals that your body needs to stop excessive shedding, breakage, thinning, and help you to grow healthy, strong, beautiful hair. So you just take two capsules a day, and this is really the superstar ingredient here of Hair Love. They also have a bunch of other products on their website. I use their oil a lot, and you wouldn't think so. The hairbrush is like a huge favorite of mine. There's just something about the bristles that feels like you're really getting into your scalp, and I absolutely love it. So if you want to check out any of the Hair Love products, you can go to hairlove.com and use the code fluently to get 15% off of everything on the site including your first subscription order. So that's hairlove.com and using code fluently. Okay, so real quick, I want to go over some things that were rumors and turned out to be true. So that way for the rest of the episode, we're not harmfully speculating, we're predicting the future. You know, this could be happening. Number one, before we found out that it was true, the Bradgelina affair breaking up Jennifer Aniston's marriage, of course it did. Like Mr. and Mrs. Smith came out, I've never seen such chemistry. That was a true rumor. Prince Charles cheating on Princess Diana. Arnold Schwarzenegger having an illegitimate child with his maid. Bill Cosby being a sexual predator. Charlie Sheen um, spending so much money on prostitutes. Bill Clinton having an affair with Monica Lewinsky. And Caitlyn Jenner being trans. So those are all things that were kind of percolating in like the rumor mill. And now, in 2023, they're all out as true. So let's start with... uh, a new rumor here. Have you heard the rumor that Harry Styles is bald and he actually wears a wig slash toupee? I have definitely not heard that rumor, but I will say as an active toupee wearer since 1999, I should be able to tell. Mm. And it doesn't look like a wig, but if he does, good for him. You know, I I love wearing a wig. I've won because I just think there's nothing else I could do. I mean, I could get a hair transplant or I could just go bald, but I love like having lots of hair. And so I'm going to wear a wig. They also make wigs so good. They're nowadays. better now. They're yeah. better now. So, yes, people are watching, like, zooming in, like, yep, let's look for that <laughs> wig line. Let's look for that wig line on Buck. It's a wig. I actually lifted it up once in a video when there was a trend, I think, in 2013 called Roast Yourself, and you had to make <laughs> yes. jokes at your expense. And I'm like, oh, I'll do this all day. Yep. And so I'm making jokes, making jokes, making jokes, and then I literally peel back my hair, and people are like, what did he just do? <laughs> so yes, it, it's a wig and Dude, it's always been a wig. I love that. Have you ever heard of the Roast Me subreddit? No. I, and I've never been on Reddit. It's funny. I've never don't. been on Reddit <laughs> and I've never really been on TikTok unless someone sends me a TikTok and I don't, I've never had the app TikTok. So the rabbit holes that will like ruin yeah, your I'm life. Good. But it's a subreddit where like you hold up a piece of paper and people just roast your appearance. And me and my friend did that. And I remember once I, it was a comment of her and I just like smiling and they said, one looks like um, the stressed out older mother of a drug addicted teen. And then we were like, ha ha, like who is who? And they were like, you can't tell, you're the old one, bitch. I was like, oh, <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry. We thought we thought we were the same age, but I guess not. Love that for you. Yeah, Update was, your Instagram bio. <laughs> yeah, it makes you mentally strong roasting yourself online, I think. I love it. So this rumor with Harry Styles, basically there was a Dumois blind item. Are you big into blind items at all? Not at all. Okay, they're basically like, Gossip that sometimes comes true. Yes. Well, I am from, again, I'm from the generation of who actually read the New York Post and everything Mm -hmm. was actually in writing. Liz Smith had a column that was the blind item. So, yes, I'm old enough to remember a a blind item. There was no internet to Google. It was just like Liz Smith wrote about it once and then we just all thought maybe. back in the day, like when they were actually written and Mm -hmm. read in the newspaper, Mm -hmm. like that was the sweet spot for them. (sighs) 
But now they're on Instagram, and there was a Dumois, Dumois blind item, uh, enemy of the show. She has fluently forward blocked, but we're still going to talk about her. She basically said that there was an A-list male pop star, an occasional actor who was secretly balding and wearing a hair piece. So then people were like, first of all, A-list male pop star. Like, do more. Uh, it's got to be like Harry Styles or who else? Like Lil Nas X or something. So then there was a scene where, like, he's in a concert and he's moving his head back and forth, and you kind of see something flip up and down, and people thought it was that. He has been asked about this. It was in a Rolling Stones interview. He said that his friend Tom is completely obsessed with the conspiracy theory. He won't stop sending me messages about people trying to work out if I'm bald. What is it with baldness? It skips a generation or something, right? He says, if your granddad's bald, then you'll be bald. Well, my granddad wasn't bald, so fingers crossed. (laughs) I feel like Harry Styles should come out and just be like, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like so many celebrities want kudos. For example, this is kind of a hot take, but I feel like Harry Styles tries to get so many kudos from the LGBTQ community. And it's like, but you haven't said if you're a part of it, but he takes the kudos from that. But the balding community is right there. And they really We're want here. We're, we welcome you, Harry <laughs> yeah. Styles. I just We're waiting. I mean, I'm gay and bald. He could get me <laughs> with both. <laughs> Um, it's funny. Why did you block someone? Let's talk about that. <laughs> oh, no, I got blocked. Oh, she blocked you? Yeah, I got blocked. Wow. Talk about giving your power away. <laughs> now, this was a similar rumor. There was a rumor that after his hair started thinning in the 90s, Matthew McConaughey got a hair transplant. So he told Lad Bible, <laughs> so funny, that he grew his hair back by shaving it all off and then using a topical ointment that he still uses. But apparently, there was this hair transplant doctor from from Denmark, who went to an international hair transplant convention and told everyone that he gave Matthew McConaughey his hair transplant. So that doctor started the rumor. Had you heard about that? I have not heard that rumor. Did you know I was bald? Because I feel like this is very well, like, I, 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 I was like, yeah. like this is amazing. <laughs> like, I'm like, it's like if I wasn't out as a gay person, rumor is I'm gay. Does she want me to come out on her goddamn podcast? Um, no, I have yeah, not heard what that. What do but you I, have to say about that, huh? <laughs> but I believe it. I believe it. I mean, a lot of uh, pretty famous people have pretty decent hair transplants. Elon and, Musk, I know, yeah. what a great one. There's some terrible ones, though. It's very risky. And any friend who I know who's had them, they regret it a little bit, and they're not thrilled with the results because really? it is pretty thin. Like, that's the thing about, like, I can get lots of density here. A hair transplant is never going to give you that much density, and it might always look – I mean, back in the day – I mean, if you saw someone in the 80s or 90s and you saw the little, it looks like crop growth, like you would know, what did you do? Like you'd start, you know, but let's just confirm he had a hair transplant. Yeah. So there we go. And you know what? Matthew McConaughey looks so freaking good even to this day. He's so weird. Here's a question (laughs) for you. Like Matthew McConaughey, he was the rom-com guy. He was so good in everyone. If you were making a rom-com today, who would you put in it? Because- me and a friend, I actually, I got coffee with Tinks and she was saying there's no rom-com guy of the moment. And I don't think there is. Because like Timothy Chalamet, he's not like a rom-com guy. Seems very intense. I just saw yeah. a clip of him and Kendall, Je- who is the Kylie, Kylie one of the, at the US yeah. Open. I'm like, right now, if I was what the buck, I'd be like, oh, we got to talk about this. Or and that, that wasn't yeah. a rom-com no. situation. That was like, they were going to like sacrifice a squirrel. After I don't think they sense. build them like that anymore. I don't think they build, you know, even like Meg Ryan as an actress. Yes. Like, right. There's nobody who's going with that kind of girl next door quality. Everybody is just every, again, style has changed. I think here's the other thing about a rom-com. I don't think we're kind of brainwashed, heteronormative, raising children the same. And so I'm not sure that's the goal. Like if you watch a rom-com now, it's almost making fun of a rom-com or it's, you know, there isn't an actual proper rom-com. Now there are people who are listening to us who live in Utah and like, I want that. I'm like, I believe you. But I I just don't think a lot of people who are being raised today are valuing that sort of courtship. Like I need a man to... Yeah, find me beautiful so I could believe in myself. Well, I mean, or any, in, like, I don't know. Frozen, right? They're like uh, the real love is like sisterhood. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, damn yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> you know? So I guess there's no great answer because there's no great rom com. I'd love a rom com though. Yeah, you know, too. there's one with Sydney Sweeney and Glenn Powell coming out. And I have no idea who either of those people are. You so know Sydney <laughs> Sweeney, she's like the big titty blonde in Euphoria. I don't watch you Euphoria. Know, you know her. <laughs> I don't know the big titty blonde in Euphoria. Oh, you'll know her soon. Sydney Sweeney. Yeah, yeah. She, she's going to be good in it. Yeah. Now, have you heard of this rumor that Leah Michelle can't read? Oh, I started the rumor. <laughs> 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 yes, yes. 
This yes. is like one of my favorites. And basically, um, uh, there was a pop culture podcast who was talking about it. And there was a section in Naya Rivera's um, memoir where she was like, I don't know, saying something shitty about like Leah Michelle. And then people were like, well, maybe Leah Michelle couldn't read the book. And that's why she like never addressed it and never got mad about it. Then all of these other claims started going around. Apparently she couldn't really improv and she like had to have her script before for Glee. And people were saying maybe that's because she couldn't read. So she couldn't pick it up. Um, I think she responded to this in the most idiotic way. To the New York Times, she said, I went to Glee every single day. I knew my lines every single day. And then there's a rumor online that I can't read or write. It's sad. It really is. I think often if I were a man, a lot of this wouldn't be the case. I just think <laughs> there's she, men out there who can't read too. Oh, you know? right. She like just shaved illiterate people and sexist kind of. I'm a what? what? And if you believe this funny rumor, yeah. sexist. Yeah. It's like, it is just a funny rumor, you yeah. know? She was one of my favorite people to cover because mm -hmm. I loved Glee. I covered it since the pilot. I went backstage at the first Glee tour and it's funny because Naya was there and Brittany was there and Corey was there and you know, I have a great video with them and Leah did not do that and she was notoriously <laughs> difficult and she is someone who was canceled in 2020, a black actress who was on Glee yes. said she, you know, said, I'm going to shit in her wig. and Wigs keep uh, coming uh, up. Right? That's the theme. So hashtag wig episode. This is yeah. the wig episode. Um, and she is someone who there was a bit of a consequence and a backlash. And then now that she did get cast in Funny Girl, people were like, is she canceled? Is she not canceled? And she did want to be in Funny Girl from day one, and they gave it to Beanie. Like, that was honestly, of all the things to cut, watch online, I was obsessed as a Broadway fan with watching Beanie just flounder in the role. The, the critics yeah. hated her. It didn't do well in the box office. And then there comes Leah Michelle, and it's a hit, and she's a hit, and they do a cast album. So... Again, that is something that as someone who I don't, I don't pay attention to this stuff. Oh, I paid attention to the funny that girl was like stuff. Manifestation coming yep. true, I think. Yep. When you met everyone from Glee, did you meet Kevin McHale? Who I did. I've actually met him like twice. I met him at that. Oh, I've met him at other things. He's an enemy of the show. What <laughs> Artie wheelchair Artie is an enemy. It was just we would do we'd cover we used to cover blind items all the time on yep. TikTok, and I think like we did a Glee blind item episode, so maybe he listened to it or something. And then on Twitter, he was like, "That girl on TikTok who like talks about blind items has no idea what she's talking about. Like none of these blind items are true." And I'm like, mm, "There's a blind item about you being bitchy at an after party. Maybe it was true and yeah. it got triggered, you know." Yeah, and I always think it's always like you would never be defensive about something if you know it's not true. There's like the great example of if I said, I don't like your green hair, you would laugh and say, I don't have green hair. I yeah. don't know what you're talking about. But if I said, I don't like you, you're a mean, selfish person, that would only hurt your self-image if you actually thought that was true. Yeah. So I think that's interesting to kind of think about any in real life too, if you're listening, take, it's really, I never feel defensive if there's nothing to defend, you know? So it's interesting that celebrities feel the need to hop on Twitter and defend a silly comment on the internet. Like it's true and I know it or it's not true and it's a silly rumor so having met him yeah and as his friend you can confirm i'm certainly not his <laughs> friend i'm definitely i am definitely an acquaintance who casual he would never remember me i've met him in passing twice i love that yeah. though that's the thing about youtube though that's interesting like when things start happening with youtubers and they'll say well you're friends with blank i'm like i've met them twice at vidcon i love that it's like you're asking me for my opinion about my friend um, I've met, you know, were, were you friends with AKA? Did you meet once Diana Agron? She was not there. Oh my I God. loved her on the show though, but I, I don't, I have no real life memories of her. She needs to play like sleeping beauty in the live action. She's just so freaking beautiful. It takes yeah. your breath away. Today's episode of Fluently For It is brought to you by Pear, a fantastic new sponsor here on the show. They make these fantastic eyewear pieces that are customizable and can be easily changed. So let's say you've got prescription glasses on, but you want to boom, slap on some lenses for the sun, or maybe you want to change your look. They have such a wide variety of uh, customizable options on their website. I personally am rocking the tortoise outer shell and then the green lenses from them. I feel like that's kind of like old school night. I like it. They also have 
such a wide variety of different um, like wide base frames. So if you want to match your sunglasses or your regular glasses to your face shape, do you have a thin head? Do you have a wide head? I personally have both the women's sunglasses and then also the kids ones. Okay. Cause I have, you know, I've got a little bit of a weird shaped head, but they have everything that you could possibly need on there. So if you want to change some things up this season and get some new frames from pair eyewear, you can go to pair eyewear.com slash fluently and get 15% off of your first pair that's pair p-a-i-r eyewear.com slash fluently here's another rumor this is kind of an old school one have you heard that barbara streisand dabbled in pornography i love that rumor if she did <laughs> i would own it by now i'm such a fan of hers i'd love to see her naked and singing and naked and, and having sex with i don't know anybody singing orgasm singing or orgasm like be beautiful well there was basically a rumor there was a 10 minute movie made in the 60s and it was sold as the promise of Barbara Streisand and hardcore but apparently it was just someone who looks a lot like her and she actually gave a quote about this she says the girl has long hair like I did back in the 60s although she was chubby while I was very skinny but the dead giveaway came when the camera zoomed in on her hands there they were short stubby fingers definitely not mine so all of you would-be buyers don't waste your money yeah, she has very long fingers. She loves doing this when she's in concert. Yeah. So she's like, look, I didn't do porn. Every time she does this, just like, look, I look, not stubby fingers. Look, I'm not a porn you know star. What I love? Like when the camera zoomed in on the fingers, it was probably her like rubbing her clit. And probably. there's Barbara Streisand being like, not mine. Too stubby. <laughs> mine are much more slender when I do that. Right. And if I had heard that rumor, I would have immediately made a YouTube with a <laughs> thumbnail of her making an orgasm face. And Barbara Streisand, porn. And I would have gotten 10 million views and thousands of dollars. And, and the Perez Hilton, there's some like cum. Um, you know, yeah, exactly, exactly, Whoa. exactly. Um, this, you must have heard this one, that Avril Lavigne is a clone. I feel like I've heard that, but not, I've never deep-dived it to hear. I mean, that sounds... Uh, Tell me more. So there was this rumor that basically, right, Avril Lavigne got famous in the early 2000s. She's coming out with this cool punk music, and even though she's making this great music, she doesn't want the life of fame. You know, she is kind of introverted. She keeps to herself and she's very anxious, very depressed. So to handle the struggles of fame, she hires a clone named Melissa, maybe Melissa Lovallo, or that could be somebody else. And that doppelganger poses as her sometimes. So if she needs to walk somewhere at the back of her head or be seen somewhere, it's Melissa going out, not Avril Lavigne. Then the rumor gets very dark and says that Avril Lavigne got depressed <laughs> and killed herself. Oh, no. But because she had all these record deals and everything lined up, they said, well, wait a minute, we have your doppelganger who looks just like you. She's going to be Avril. So they say that this woman was Avril Lavigne. Now, what people tend to forget when they talk about this replacement rumor is that she could have gotten plastic surgery, which I think happened. And a lot of people say, you know, oh, it's so obvious because the old Avril was so punk rock and now this new Avril is just pop and also her hair handwriting's different but you know trust me I've put on the tinfoil hat and I've listened to videos of both of them singing they both have the same singing voice like you cannot fake that so I think that they are the same person and she just got a little nip and tuck I hope, I mean, oh my God, there's an episode of the Brady Bunch where Greg Brady becomes the new Johnny Bravo. So perhaps this conspiracy theory is just based on Johnny Bravo is now Greg Brady and mm -hmm. Avril Lavigne is now Melissa. Um, I love Avril Lavigne. She's someone who I love those meet and greet. <laughs> She's like so uncomfortable around human beings. Like, same with Brittany. It's like, yeah. Um, and I love, I like, girlfriend is a jam. What the hell was like my ringtone for I years? Oh my God. Copyright. It um, makes me so hot. Yeah, yeah, makes yeah. me want to drop. Yeah, yeah. So like, ridiculous. So I, I like this rumor and I would run with it. See, that's the thing about like when you do like comedy, I love it doesn't matter. Like I'm not we're not I'm a fact like show. Funny, like I would yeah. like I would like to just go with the, the theme of your podcast is Leah Michelle can't fucking read. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like Avril Levine is dead. You're welcome. Tune in next week. Like, it's like, like, that's what makes life fun. The real, like, nothing is fun. <laughs> Leah Michelle did great on Funny Girl. What's fun about that? Yeah. Avril Lavigne is still moderately successful Canadian. If What's anything, fun about I'd, that? If like, into the skit, I'll be like, and she also can't draw and she also can't drive. <laughs> exactly. You know? Exactly. And then you could really lean into the feminist angle and be like, she can't cook either. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Know? Exactly. No, she, Avril was actually asked about this. Oh, um, no. <laughs> and she said, yeah, some people think that I'm not the real me, which is so weird. Like, why would they even think that? I'm sure she thinks that. It's funny. I think all of the cloning ones are so funny because it's people forgetting about facelifts and stuff. Like yeah. when everyone's like Joe Biden 
was di- like is a new clone. I'm like, I think he just got a really good facelift, you know? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. This was a fun one. The rumor that Lindsay Lohan had a twin sister. This one also has to deal with death, but have you heard of it? I've never heard that rumor. And I very I was very into Lindsay's stories yes. back in the day. I think we were top eight friends on MySpace. That's how into Lindsay I was. You were friends with Lindsay? I think so, unless it was someone catfishing me. But I'm pretty <laughs> sure no. Lindsay and I, I remember because even when she was on Twitter briefly, we would DM. I have weird old celebrity DMs. Like I remember oh. Demi Lovato messaging me, telling me not to like F with the Kardashians. And I'm like, <laughs> Oh my God, Demi Lovato's like like threatening me on Twitter. And so Lindsay and I had weird messages back and forth too. And again, I'm a grown up. This is weird. I acknowledge this now. But um, Demi Lovato goes feral on Twitter sometimes. Remember when she was so mad at t- Taylor Swift for giving, <laughs> yeah, Kesha money? Yes, like, I think she gave yes. her like $250,000. Yep. And then Demi was like, yeah, but you could have tweeted more. And it's like, I think she liked the money. No, I think she yeah. was more grateful for that. Yes. But she did. She wasn't even defending herself. It was the Kardashians. I, I don't remember. I said something sassy about the to, to Kardashians, and she wrote, "Honey, don't act like you know." And I'm like, "Oh, Demi Lovato, like don't <laughs> sass a sasser. Like this won't end well." But again, it gave me great content. So imagine, like, I could make a whole video be like, "Demi Lovato is upset about something I said about a Kardashian." I have peaked. Like, my life will never get any more. Like, this is amazing. And was this Demi in her bangs era, in her punk rock era? It has to be, like, 2010. Like, I don't, you know, the height of me was 2010-ish, so it has to be around, like, 20. The height of me, in case you're just tuning in, the height of me, 2023. Okay, so Um, she kissed Joe Jonas, and then she DM'd you. It was, like, around that time era. Yeah, Yeah. like, they loved me. It was weird. Like, Miley loved, they all loved me. They all watched me. It was cute. They all, it was cute. You must have gotten good vibes from Miley. I got a lot of good vibes from Miley yeah. and they were all cute and lovely and silly and we and they were making videos on YouTube too like Miley yes. and Manders were doing dance videos like it was such a silly goofy Tell time. Me you remember the drama between Demi and Selena's video and then the Miley and Mandy video making Oh yeah them. I mean that was so I mean and that seems so innocent kids, now yeah. and so charming now and I don't I just love that I don't know it's like honestly I'll compare it to when I the kids like me who grew up in the 70s and 80s our parents just let us go outside and we didn't get murdered and somehow we got home. There was something charming about the internet in 2006 and seven that people just made videos and nobody was going for views. No one knew you could make a living doing it. It was, there was something about communicating and connecting and I loved it. It was something about that, that again, there was a charm to it that now it's like, that was so silly and hilarious. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, but I I feel you. I miss the old internet So. so much. Anyway, but Lindsay Lohan has oh, a twin. Yes, yes go ahead. Sorry. Okay, so this was basically the rumor. And by the way, she was a friend or a foe of what the buck? She was, uh, I think, a bit of both. It depends okay. on that. I think she knew I had her back in a way, but I also made many jokes at her expense in a way. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, up and down. Well, this was her rumor. So basically, we all remember The Parent Trap 1998 came out. What a fantastic movie. And it was done with such clever camera work to make it seem like they were two Lindsay Lohans. But then a rumor started going around that it wasn't fancy camera work. She actually had a real life twin sister named Kelsey who filmed the movie alongside with her. There's two different paths of this rumor. So one rumor says she died before the movie's release. So Disney executives covered it up to save the project and said that they just filmed Lindsay Lohan. And then later on, Lindsay Lohan kind of went down this downward spiral in life, abusing alcohol and drugs because she was grieving her lost sister. But the (laughs) second rumor says that, um, this one's crazy, that because, I don't even know why this one, I feel insane saying this, that because um, Kelsey wasn't as good of an actress as Lindsay, Disney killed Kelsey because she wasn't as talented. And then that's why Lindsay was going through such a hard time in life because she felt bad that Disney... Disney killed her sister. You haven't heard that one. <laughs> I've never heard that one, but now I'm going to go again. I'm going to think about Kelsey Lohan all the time, even if she <laughs> exists or not. I just, I, again, I would just now, if I was still making videos, I would have constant running jokes about Kelsey Lohan, <laughs> Melissa Levine. And like my whole life would be just farce. Like, you know, this yes. is the writer's room of a sitcom. Like it's yeah. like whether or not it happened, it doesn't matter. It's, you know what? We should pick actually for fluently forward. We should pick a date like October 9th. And that's like the <laughs> anniversary for Kelsey Lohan. It's like everybody 
like celebrate her. Like we're thinking of her. Yeah. I'll try to look up the alleged date of September twelfth. It's the day after September. <laughs> That's yeah. what it's like it's like we're still sad, but we're really sad. Kelsey's day. <laughs> September twelfth. Okay. Kelsey Speaking Love. Of government uh, theories here. This one has got to be one of my favorites. Have you heard the rumor that Britney Spears was on the White House payroll? I have never heard that <laughs> rumor. <laughs> this one's really, really fun. So basically, we all know that in the early 2000s, you know, Britney had a tough time with the public. There were different incidences that happened with the paparazzi, her shaving her head, losing custody of her sons. But one theory has been floated that this was part of a carefully orchestrated plan by George W. Bush to distract from different scandals that were happening with the administration because a lot of her behavior perfectly timed up with rocky moments of his presidency. So here are some of the examples. Her famous kiss with Madonna at the 2003 Video Music Awards came at around the same time he was facing backlash for the Iraq War. In January 2004, she famously married her childhood friend, Jason Alexander, the marriage that only lasted for 55 hours. And this happened a week before his former aide, Scooter Libby, was going to stand trial for leaking the name of an undercover CIA agent. In the early 2006, she was caught driving with her son on her lap, and then she was criticized for that. And that was at the same time that Dick Cheney accidentally shot a man oh during a hunting God. trip. In 2007, when the war on terror was taking a negative turn with the resurgence of the Taliban and Al-Qaeda, she shaved her head and attacked the paparazzi van with an umbrella. And then this basically, you know, people put it together, and they said every time George Bush is in the shitter, you know, he calls up, Britney Spears and tells her to do something to take the spotlight off of him. Could you see that being true? I wish in my heart of hearts <laughs> that Britney had the wherewithal to do that all yeah. deliberately and intentionally. Also, if my like tax money was going oh, to Britney man. Spears, I'd be like kind of psyched about I would that. Love that. I'd be like I would fun. Love I gave her like ten dollars. You know, she's one of those people that again, she's had a rough time for most of this. Like yes. in the end, occasionally she dabbles in success, meaning she'll have like a residency and. It'll seem like she's okay for a minute. It's Jamie Lynn is on Dancing with the Stars now. I did see that today. So it's like she's gonna, I'm okay. sure they're thinking maybe Britney will come and sit in the front. She won't. You know, I'm sure they're hoping Britney yeah. will come and sit, you know. But. I just feel so, I feel like, um, I mean, once again, talk about a rumor that ended up coming true. The whole idea of like the conservatorship and her being controlled uh, by her family. Uh, you know, yeah. six years ago, people would have thought that you were talking crazy. Right. And now it came out that it was true. So right. I just find that like mm. wild as well. Today's episode is brought to you by Bowl and Branch. I've been using their bed sheets lately and you can probably tell because in about, I'd say maybe 60% of all of my TikTok videos, I'm making them in bed and maybe that's because the sheets are so comfortable. So if you, <laughs> if you see any of those videos, those are the natural color sheets behind me and I have just been absolutely loving having the sheets on my bed. So Bowl and Branch is different because they make soft, luxurious sheets, but they don't have any toxins or any any harsh chemicals and something that's great about the bowl and branch sheets is that they actually get softer and softer with every wash which is kind of the opposite of what a lot of my clothing and other bed sheets have done in the past so I love investing in good high quality essentials and bowl and branch is just um absolutely fantastic they feel like butter they're very very breathable from night one it makes me very pumped to go to bed so if you want to sleep better at night with bowl and branch sheets you can get 15 percent off your first order use promo code fluently at bowlandbranch.com that's bowlandbranch b-o-l-l-a-n-d branch.com with the promo code fluently exclusions apply see site for details okay this is <laughs> this is a fun one Someone is dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she cackles. Someone is dead. They're dead they, with the wig on. <laughs> okay, Larry King kept a fan under his desk to blow away farts. I have, n oh, okay. I have no doubt that someone like Larry King strikes me as the type of man Flash of a certain light. that he would have someone under his desk for a multitude of reasons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, While you're God. down there. Is he a sexual pervert? Uh, he had seven wives, I think. I mean, I think he had lots of wives wives and lots of children so i'm sure he enjoyed oh the God. being procreating at least or not wearing a condom yeah. one is the case one is the case you know yeah yeah he either loved having sex or he hated, uh, a, condom, hated a condom you know? you know okay i'm gonna have to do a little bit of a deep dive into yeah uh, look back and look back to larry look well back here's, to larry. here's the issue about his um digestive tract so this was a rumor right he's a cnn interviewer larry king and there were all of these message boards saying that he kept <laughs> 
cutting the cheese and forgetting to pass the crackers. So one person claimed that he had a fan under his desk that would blow away the smell of his farts because it happened. Oh, so you often. meant a fan. I thought you meant like a fan, like a, a, an admirer. Oh, no, no, <laughs> That's no. why I was like a fan is under his desk. Blowing. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. You meant a fan. I mean, now I'm that very I'm- literal. Here's the you, thing. If we want to read it with your lens, because this wasn't fan. as important, there could be a fan human who was under his desk and would suck up the fart the minute Thank it you. exited his ass. So then maybe that was also preventing the guest from smelling it. But I think this was a fan with blades. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, no, don't worry, don't worry. So basically this message board rumor started going around and it actually came out an interviewer asked him <laughs> about this. They said, there seems to be an internet obsession about you and flatulence. Do you know about this and he said I have no idea I don't know there was a New York Post article years ago they had an insider at CNN in the New York Bureau who said that have I had flatulence in my life sure is it a common thing no and the interviewer pressed on and said people say you have a special fan in the studio (laughs) and that there's a button you press so that way if you make a farting noise you can block it out on the air and he said I have no idea what you are talking about wow Defensive. See, it's true. Very defensive. It's giving Artie from Glee to me. Yeah. So it sounds like it happens. I definitely have no doubt in my mind he is an. He was rest in peace an avid farter, and he should have just gone with it and said yeah. And that's the thing about people who have a good sense of humor. Just say yes. Harry Styles, you wear a wig. Of course I do. Larry (laughs) King, do you fart? Of course I do. Lindsay Lohan, do you have a dead twin? Oh my God, she was such a better actress than me. I miss that bitch. Like you know, it's like you're missing out on the opportunity to just say yes. Yes. I yes. am with you. Remember when Lady Gaga was asked about her penis and she yes. said, and so what if I do? Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Like, Just I think easy sentence the... out of your mouth. Exactly. Who said that? Who cares? It's maybe true. This was a very fun one. Um, Anna Wintour had an affair with Bob Marley. Have you heard about this? No. So basically, um, throughout the 70s, when she was a junior fashion assistant, she was obsessed with Bob Marley. And there was a biography called Front Row. And they say that when he played in Manhattan, she scored backstage passes to the show and the pair disappeared together for a week. Now, she (laughs) says that it didn't happen. But first of all, I've seen old pictures of her and... She was really cute. Yeah. So I I think she's cute now. I love a cold woman. I I love a cold, successful woman. That's my sweet spot. No, yeah. Uh, I love a cold, successful woman. (laughs) That's that's my type of lady. I'm trying to think of cold, successful. (laughs) The way, like, Nicole Kidman looks, there's nothing warm about her. Like, Mm -hmm. she is just, like, I just, I mean, mean, she's lovely and happily married to Keith, but I just think there's a coldness to her that I admire. That's crazy that you bring her up because I'm actually working on a doc for a future episode. Have you heard about her father being the Jeffrey Epstein of Australia? No. There's some weird shit going on in her family. And, you know, a little teaser for the episode we'll be doing. Her father was basically accused by this woman of not just, like, you know, being Mm. abusive to her, but also being part of an international, you know, ring. Mm. Then after he's accused, he goes to Singapore where he mysteriously dies by like falling Uh, down or something, which uh, was really weird. Also, there's all of this weird shit where like she was in Eyes Wide Shut, the Stanley Kubrick movie where he died after it. And it was all about ritual and sacrifice. And also like her and her sister speak a secret language to each other. And um, Hugh Grant has commented on this being like, yeah, I met her sister and it was so great. But like they talk in a secret language to each other. There's some weird shit going on with the Kidman family. Have you heard about this? I've never. But that is like I will tune into your podcast because I'd like to deep dive on this. I'm very I love Nicole Kidman. I find her fascinating. I have an AMC membership just so I can see her three (laughs) times a week for twenty one dollars a month. Hashtag not sponsored. What did she say? We we go here. We come here to feel. We come here to feel things. Because here they are. (laughs) And she is dead serious and yeah. she is invested and I just I love her I love her I she love has a her. very severe classic beauty but I yeah. know what you mean she is she's not like Selena Gomez has the round bubbly mm-hmm. face and Nicole Kidman her there were pictures cool of uh, Nicole Kidman recently at the US Open and Amy mm-hmm. Schumer commented on the severeness of her appearance <laughs> and she got lots of negative comments because it is 2023 so she deleted the post um, but it was it was a very severe look and expression and again you can't make a joke like women supporting women i'm making yeah. a joke about a, a 
again. Right. I'm sure Nicole Kidman would laugh too, like when they did the, there was the gif of her for years because at the Academy Awards she was clapping like an alien. <laughs> so now if you ever search gifs of Nicole Kidman or clapping, you just see this A thing and it's like, clap. what's happening? Like, Do you remember when, obviously when Will Smith slapped Chris Rock oh. and they panned to like a few people in the audience and Nicole Kidman was so surprised, but it was <laughs> obvious that she had been Botoxed to hell. So yeah. everything below Below her eyebrows mm-hmm. was moving, but like here was perfectly mm-hmm. still, and everyone was like, "Oh, this yeah. great action shot is how you can see whose face is frozen right now." You know, I love when actors give interviews and they say, "I've tried Botox and I don't anymore." I'm like, "Okay," <laughs> like it's I've, like it wears I've, off after a couple months. So it's like, I mean, I've had Botox for 20 years, so it's like, I mean, I have a little lift right now, but I mean, my face is basically not moving. Like over the years, if I've had to do some acting things, I've let it wear off because again, there's, your face isn't doing anything. It's yeah. like. I try and raise that eyebrow and look funny. I'm like, nothing's happening, <laughs> you know? You know who uh, Amelia Clark could, like, never get from Game of Thrones, the yeah. dragon lady? Like, her eyebrows are so expressive. But, yeah, every time they're like, oh, I don't like Botox, I'm like, liar. It's when awesome. When they came back from Desperate Housewives every hiatus, they would all be doing lots of mouth acting. So <laughs> it's, like, it's like Terry Hatcher's, like, nothing was happening. So they'd either bug eyes or, like, <laughs> like their mouth would be doing a lot of heavy lifting to because they're none of their faces were moving. It's like summer hiatus. Wait, that's such a good point. We we have a Desperate Housewives episodes on the map. Maybe you'll have to come back for I'd that. Li- I'd have fully items. talk about Desperate Housewives all day. Such a good show. Well, um, let's see where we're here. Anna Wintour with Bob Marley. Oh, so I you know, was <laughs> looking up this online because obviously she did talk about it a little bit on uh, the Late Late Show with James Corden where they did um, tell the rumor or eat this disgusting fish testicle thing, right? And he said, there's a rumor you dated Bob Marley. What was Bob Marley like in bed? <laughs> <laughs> Nasty. And she said, I'm really glad you asked me that. Fake news. I've never actually met Bob Marley. I'm sorry to disappoint. I think she's lying. That's just what I think. And people online were saying, too, that back in the day, he was known for fucking pretty much anyone, anytime. He would get after it. I think that they hooked up. What do you say? I agree. I think it's true. I like to think it's true. I'd like to imagine them having sex back in the day. Yeah, me too. If I could uh, if I could close my eyes, I could see it. Her sunglasses are on. Yes, you know? yes, yes, yes. I'm not even taking anything off. Just go. <laughs> Have fun, Bob. Have fun down there, Bob. And she's got a tweed blazer on. Of course. Now, here was a rumor that Nancy Reagan was great at oral sex. Have you heard this? I have heard that for some reason. I don't know why you saying that is not like news to my ears. I'm like, yep, Nancy and the blowies. Because it's a fact. Yeah. So there were rumors going around that Nancy was the throat goat. So <laughs> basically, there's a biographer named oh. Kitty Kelly. Yes, she was yes. like a dirt slinging biographer. Yes. And I think I read that book because I'm did. of that generation. I remember when that book came out. Yeah. Was, yeah. Okay, so you you heard this like in yeah. real time. She was basically known as Hollywood's blowjob queen. And uh, the details that were getting passed around, <laughs> LOL, passed around, <laughs> was that when she was a 20 something starlet, she was known to give the best blowjob in town. But now people were saying, too, back in the day, there was a lot of nasty casting couch stuff going on. So maybe these weren't consensual blowjobs that were being given, but more casting couch blowjobs, which now makes it a sad rumor. And I've brought the vibe of the room down. So we're going to keep going on. Today's episode is brought to you by Blissy. If you are looking for a little bit of bougie luxury in your life, I know I like little pockets of uh, exquisite things. That is going to be the Blissy pillowcase. This is an award-winning 100% mulberry silk pillowcase. This is not like a lot of the dupes out there that say, you know, it's a satin pillow case. It's a good alternative. This is the real deal, baby. 100% silk. This is going to be great because at night, this helps your hair when you sleep. It reduces frizz, tangles. It prevents hair breakage. And then it also helps too with your face. I personally am a side sleeper, which don't talk to me about it. I'm, I'm always going to be a side sleeper. And this means that at least the side I'm sleeping with, the skincare products are going to be moisturized into my skin because the silk doesn't absorb everything that I put on. So if you want a Blissy Silk Pillowcase, of your own or maybe you want to get one for a friend um guys love them too i'm being honest you can try now risk-free for 60 nights at blissy.com slash fluently and you can get an additional 30 percent off that's b-l-i-s-s-y.com slash fluently and you can use code fluently to get an additional 30 percent off Okay, now we're going to end with some rapid fire internet rumors from family and friends that people have talked about online and I've kind of collected. Before we do that, my favorite rumor of all time is that Taylor Swift is bisexual and her and Carly Kloss were hooking up. 
What do you know about that? I know nothing about that, but I think again, it's I think people. I like. I think I'm pansexual. I think most people enjoy again in the right circumstance, the right person. I, I just think, think if you you're either pansexual or you haven't gotten out. Yeah, that, you know? like, yeah. yeah. Like uh, like I just think I, I like the idea of Taylor Swift at some point saying I love the ladies, and she certainly had you know heartbreak with models. the men and yeah. better. Yeah. So I think I don't know. Like again, nothing would surprise me. I think that's again. I'm of a certain age that there's nothing that could ever be a headline that well that's surprises me okay not even Lindsay Lohan's dead twin I let's like again that my, my emotion does not surprise my emo, my emotion is delighted yeah, and again okay. September 12th justice for Best Kelsey Kelsey, or Kelsey. Case Kelsey. <laughs> you remember Kelsey in never forget house. Kelsey and okay here we go somebody says my aunt was pretty relentlessly bullied at a summer camp by Gwyneth Paltrow and hates her to this day is that true I mean you're asking like, me I'm asking so, do you this is a rumor could you see it happening, or do you think this person's lying? True. You think Gwyneth Paltrow's a bully? I believe she could be a bully as a teenager, as most teenage girls could be. Oh, that's a very well- uh, it's the, You know, I don't believe Gwyneth Paltrow is this nasty human being, but I believe at age 15 years old, you know, with a, you know, at a camp situation, she could have been a dick about who's sleeping where and itching yeah. powder in the sleeping bags or whatever bitches she's do. she's a Nepo baby, probably yeah. always got her way. It's yes. probably some bougie- I love her. Camp. Talk about cold, like that. Yes. <laughs> like it's like, for me, you know, put me at a dinner party with Nicole Kidman, Gwyneth Paltrow, and Anna Wintour, and I'll just be like, this. I'll chew on this all night. People on TikTok say that I look like Gwyneth Paltrow. I, I never really get it in person, but I think there's something about like the TikTok version of it. But you I resemble. The, see what I'm saying? You. That's the, you know, when people say you look like, you resemble. I think it's just bl having blonde hair and thin lips, but you know what? I'll take it. Yeah. Um, You're both beautiful. Thanks. I just think there's something so fun about her because she's out of touch. I do believe she could be a bully for sure. Yeah. But I also love the fact that she is kind of aware about how out of touch she is. Like, I don't like when a celebrity who's so far removed from us and like hasn't, you know, worked paycheck to paycheck in maybe ever mm -hmm. tries to tell you like who to vote for, what to do with your life or how you should be recycling. It's like, fuck off, you know? Right. And Gwyneth Paltrow isn't going to do that, but she is going to sell you a $300 rose quartz egg to put in your yeah. vagina. So. She is very self-aware and not apologetic. And she's someone who, when I see her, I'm like, she very much enjoys being herself. She gets mm -hmm. it. She gets it. She's in on it. She knows what the internet says about her. She she has a hot husband, nice kids, and a lot of money. She's good. Yeah. You know, she's good. She's good. Yeah, she's very She's not trying to be it. pleasing to the world. No, she's not. To, uh, <laughs> she's not yeah. Or relatable, like you said. Like, I love a celebrity. Yeah. Like, I am someone who is not famous and not that wealthy, but I don't strive to be relatable. Like, that's not my goal in life is to, I want people to relate to me. I don't feel relatable at all. Not, not at all. No. What's the most relatable thing about you? Oh I have, my I have God. bunions. A lot of people relate to that. What do I, re what is relatable about me? I mean, I'll be deep. I mean, well, I have a, ma I have a major drinking problem. I haven't drank in six years. Oh. Sorry to bring the podcast down. I've been very successful and then very not successful. And now I'm successful again. And I love that because it is so much more fun the second time around. Because the first time I didn't enjoy it because I was so busy being successful yeah. and taking it for granted. I think that's relatable to someone of my age who is in a bit of their fourth chapter in life. Yeah. But I, but my goal is to not be relatable. I don't wake up thinking I need to be like a bull or relatable. I just wish to be the most authentic, enjoying life version of myself. Yeah, I think a lot of people get confused about relatability and authenticity, and yeah. authenticity is so great, and relatability, especially when it's, like, being done for show, is just, yeah. like, the most unattractive thing to have to witness. Yeah, so, again, I derailed the conversation. No, I, I love the derailing. Okay, this was, um, <laughs> this was a fun one. Someone says, my ex was a DJ and did something for SNL back in the day. He met Kanye West at an after party, probably around 2005, 2006-ish, introduced himself, and Kanye goes, do you make at least seven figures a year? <laughs> my ex said no, and Kanye goes, goes, see ya. <laughs> Do you think that happened? 100%. That was also the Kanye who went on live TV and said, George Bush doesn't care about black people. I so I mean, that version, I love that guy. <laughs> like, I just think, yeah. I think he would say anything like, that seems like a sentence that would easily fall out of his mouth. Him back in the day was kind of giving Gwyneth Paltrow. It was just like very much authentic. Okay, somebody said, I see this all the time on Reddit, but my mom's friend met Brad Pitt twice and she said he smelled awful. Have you heard of, this is the thing in the blind items where people talk about celebrities smelling like shit 
but they do it in almost like a fetishy way because they can get away with it. Mm -hmm. So like, they're like, just how dirty can I be around someone? And they'll let me be dirty around them because they're so excited to see me. And they do this in bed as well, allegedly. Have you heard about it? I've Have never you ever hooked up with a celebrity? Uh, yes, definitely. <laughs> how was it? You don't have to say who it was. Great. Was no, experience? good. Like I've had, I've, I've, I mean, I'm great in bed, so I have great sexual mm. experiences. Thank you. That's what's up. Um, but I think that the smelling thing is, I think men naturally smell. I think yeah. men, some men don't wear deodorant. So I yeah. believe there's an occasion where you could meet a celebrity and think, oh God, they smell or they have bad breath. But yes, it is. It, I mean, in the gay world, it's very fetishy in that you'll, uh, you'll go to a hookup. Now it's a whole different show, but they will be like, They'll ask. Like, some guys, like, don't want you to shower. I'm like, oh, I'm taking a shower. Like, what? Or, you know, I want, okay, don't worry. Yeah. heard about this with Harry, uh, I was going to say Harry Potter. Harry, Harry Styles po being a sloppy bottomist. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'll come back for your show about sloppy bottoms. Because <laughs> there's an art. <laughs> but, yeah, it was. it's just crazy to, like, read about these different celebrities who are like, I'm stinky, and, like, uh, you're going to want yeah. my autograph anyway. Now, here's another one. This is how someone said... Speaking of Nicole Kidman, I met a woman at a farmer's market in Aspen during a music festival. Keith Urban was headlining. She told me that she was the chef for Keith and that he and his girlfriend were really lovely people. Girlfriend, not wife, Nicole. She swore that the girlfriend traveled everywhere with Keith and that Nicole was very aware of the situation. Again, as much as they seem in love, it is 2023 and nothing like that would surprise me. That yeah, like he would, yeah, sure. I, I love not having opinion. That's the other thing that I love about not being what the buck anymore. Oh, I don't have to have opinions about other people's marriages. Oh, I don't have to have opinions about other people's life choices. And so I just think good for them. I hope he has a girlfriend. I hope she has a girlfriend. And I hope they just have lots of sex and I love hope life. Her and Gwyneth Paltrow. Yes. Using some sort of oh. Jay Dildo back and forth. And oh. $400 on their website. I love your show. <laughs> I'm, this is such a good show. I'm going to go home and journal about that. Like, I'm going to be like. <laughs> I'm going to manifest a I went to one of those sex parties once and I had a double dildo, and let me tell you, it's not as fun as it looks. It it's looks a lot great. of work. <laughs> You're both having to, yes. I would imagine. You're welcome squatting. for that visual. Yeah. What, yeah. what party? It was, you know, not a party. It was like a literally like a sex toy party when your friend is selling Tupperware and Stop. she's selling like lube and vibrators and things, and me and my. Ex-husband were the only gay people there, so we're like, well, we better buy the double dildo. And, you know, and so we did, and then it ended up being like a dog toy because we, like, hid it in the closet, and then one day the dog is walking around with the double dildo in his mouth. I'm like, well, that is how this story was supposed to end. George Glass, also named after a Brady Bunch character, is walking around the house with the double dildo that we used once, and it was exhausting and not that fun. It's a lot you're both working hard. <laughs> Exhausting and not that fun. That's my is, review of the yeah. double dildo. <laughs> oh my god. Have you heard of that church here in Denver? It's it's not a church in <laughs> Good Denver. Good segue. But it's the... like it's like a sex church here. Oh. It begins with like a K. They have like orgies all the time. Oh, I love an orgy. Anyway, whatever. Though we'll talk about it after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another Keith Urban one was somebody said, um, in two thousand five ish, Keith Urban's mom came into a hair salon that I was a receptionist at during college to get him a chi hair straightener for his show that night. And I have wondered how he gets it so straight. So he must straighten it. He must straighten his hair. He has beautiful straighter. Fun fact, I worked for Live Nation back in the day and he was a new star. He was opening for Cheryl Crow. That's how not famous he was yet. And I remember watching him thinking, oh my God. And then right outside my office, they put a picture of him and it was signed, love Keith Urban. And yes, his hair was that straight and amazing. Yeah. There's no way that does that without a no. little help but and it's like so but you know what the funny thing is even like i've never seen it get frizzy because you know people straighten their hair right like, taylor i was at taylor's concert yes. and it starts straight and then it gets yeah yeah it gets yeah. humid yeah. but his never does nope. he must like slick it with like coconut oil or yeah. something okay somebody said <laughs> this one really tickled me i babysat for a rich family in new york city and the kid went to the same school as sarah jessica parker's kids the mom i worked for told me that sjp would bend down to pick things up off the ground outside the school in the hallways etc so that way she didn't have to talk to other parents who were coming up to her i love the idea of making eye contact with sarah jessica parker and wanting to ask her about a conference or something but she ducks out of your eye line to inspect a gum wrapper or a paper clip i could see her doing that 
I, I, I love the visual. I, I just think she, she cares so much about being polite and doing mm-hmm. the right thing that rather than like be rude, just be like, oh, oops, like there's always a penny on the ground that I'm picking mm-hmm. up or something. And she doesn't strike me as someone who wants to draw any attention to herself. And so I think as I have friends who go to school with famous parents and they're just like so like just we're here for the kids. Like, I don't yeah. want you to hear, you know, I love Sex in the City. I want to pick up a gun wrapper. Please don't, you know. And yeah. so it's hard. It is hard for like normal people not to say, you know. I love you. Yeah, just like yeah. one sentence or something. All right, um, here's the last one. Someone says, I know someone who worked on Whip It who said that Drew Barrymore and Elliot Page hooked up during the filming. Also said that Drew Barrymore is incredibly nice and basically glows in person. I could see that happening. I could see that happening. And of course, it's funny because I was on Instagram today and I said, it's funny about Drew Barrymore because she is someone who seems like nobody would ever say a bad word about her. And then she brought her show back against the strike and everyone's yeah. like, you made the wrong decision, Drew. And yeah. so like, it's funny. I've never heard a bad word about her. I love her. She her seems so it's lovely. Like, it she was a drug so addict. Uh, she was doing drugs at age. I read her autobiography. That's like, we're the same age, me and Drew. And so I remember reading Little Girl Lost and being like, who is the girl from E.T.? And she was doing cocaine and she was drinking. And I just think she overcome so much and led such a full and lovely life so I just love being a fan of hers and I hope she had sex with Elliot Page <laughs> and I would I would download that on OnlyFans I would I would I'd pay t- I'd pay premium dollar for that me too and you know what I'd wear that VHS out <laughs> but like it's she just has such a good reputation that even though she's bringing her show back yeah it's still a good reputation people are like I wonder why yeah. like it doesn't make sense um and yeah, she also is bisexual, but not a lot of people know that because yeah. she's only done a few low key quotes about it. Well, thank you so, so much for coming on. We'll have to have you back for Desperate Housewives and we can talk about rumors about that. Wigs but part two, dead mm-hmm. siblings part two. Wigs, Botox, um, dead clones, all of oh it. My God. What are you doing now if people want to find you? Because I follow you on Instagram, and I know you're not doing what the book this show, but you kind of put on, like, a daily show on Instagram, and I love it. Thanks. So that is, like, the one social media that I have always kept using because I just love it, and I think it just helps me live in line with my purpose, and I love to just model, like, my life because I have a very fun life, and I have a very silly life. And so, yes, you can follow me on Instagram. It's uh, My username is Hey Michael Buckley, and I'm on every day, and I just I start my day and I just kind of say nice things and I share I play flag football or I go to church or I just have nice thoughts about myself or I buy a cute new bracelet and I show it off and I'm just a silly, ridiculous person living a silly, ridiculous life and I like to share it and I, I have a normal job now so it's like it's so nice to not do calls to action and not yeah. be like, I, I, I'm I never, again, please follow me, it's fun but it's also not how I make you a living. You smash the living. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. So and no, you, um, you yeah. have had sex with celebrities I've had sex with celebrities with Artie from Glee. And I, I'm acquaintances with Artie from Glee. Okay. <laughs> right. And his blind item was true. I, I would have to say it's 99.9. <laughs> You so so what an honor to have. I had a on. lovely time. And uh, congrats we'll on your good. success. Thank you so much. Enjoy and thank it. you everyone for listening and we will see you next week for another episode of Fluently Forward. Bye guys.